Well, hey guys, it's Michael here. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little video from uh, actually quite a few viewers requested this. So we're going to be running the Vulcan and Titanium on 120 volts and doing a few weld tests with it, show you guys how they work. Um, we also brought this Lincoln Weld Pack 140 from my work into the mix just to kind of show you guys what you get. This welder here sells at Home Depot for about $550. It's a 120 volt machine and just only MIG. You can hook up a spool gun to it as well, but it's only a 140 amp machine. Um, so that's 550. It weighs about the same, about 50 pounds. So it weighs about the same as the Omni Pro here. And this machine is half the weight of the Lincoln. It's a 200 amp machine, multi-voltage, multi-processor welder for $100 more. So I think this is the way to go. I like this one a lot. So yeah, and we're gonna be running the Vulcan. Like I said, it's the same weight as this, but it's a 220 amp machine, multi-process. Price point, I bought it for $750, but they've gone up quite a bit. They're selling from $9 to $950, depending if you get on a coupon or not. But yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of welding, so stick around. All right, got the Lincoln plugged into 120 volts here. And if you guys are not interested in seeing how this thing welds, um, I'll put a number on the screen here for the part to fast forward the video to so you can just see the Omni Pro and Titanium. This is 3 sixteenths. It's a little thick for this wire. This is 030 wire. I think it's said to run at 025. We got the settings about right. So uh, left a little 16 inch gap on here and we're just gonna put some uh, weld on here. So the original idea for this video I had was to run each machine on 120 volts and uh, weld a, you know, up hopefully up to two feet of bead and uh, see if each machine would hit a duty cycle and how many inches of bead you would get before it happened. But because the Lincoln is not really that rad of a welder, it's kind of a pain in the ass. I couldn't go as planned because of this. Yeah. I wonder what happened. The breaker broke. Too much amperage on the breaker. So anyways, this thing draws too much amperage. Usually uh, at my work, it pops the breaker constantly there too. Well, I realized that was going to be an ongoing problem, so I just decided to run each machine on 120 volts and do some welding. I got some uh, quarter inch thick box tube in here, and I ground the actual joint down to a V, and we're going to go in here and fill it a little bit. You can weld thicker metal, especially if you V it like this to get deeper penetration. So this little test here I'm showing you guys is pretty possible to weld quarter inch metal with a small machine like this by chamfering the edges. Um, ideally if you had 240 volts set it up and weld with the right amperage but surprisingly you can get by with a pretty small machine with this technique. We'll get on to the next machine and show you guys how they weld. All right, so here's the titanium. I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to check out the chart on the side of this thing. So in this one, I'm not switching over the wire for this video. I got 035 wire in it. I'm running a 7525 gas, 035 wire. And we're gonna set it to eighth inch. 180 for the feed for the wire, 18 volts. And inductance between five and 10. All right, titanium set it up for eighth inch. And uh, I got 035 wire, the Lincoln had 030. But uh, like I said, I don't feel like switching it out. Here we go. So I've had a feeling about these uh, inverter welders of being a lot more efficient with their power. Um, I'm plugged into 120 volts as you guys know and we got on the Lincoln, it's a transformer welder, we got six and a half inches. So from here on it was that I just, just welded with the titanium. So we got six and a half inches before the actual uh, breaker and the power box pop. So we got this tack weld on here, we're just going to run down it and see if it pops around the same range or not. So we're going to get welding. So after running the inverter welders, I can't see myself ever going back and purchasing a transformer welder ever again. The inverters seem to be less amp draw and uh, much more efficient, like I said. Just smoother, stable arc, and uh, I just think they weld a lot nicer. That's my preference. So, as you guys notice, I stopped here for a second. I was really having a hard time with the lighting behind in my helmet. I didn't want to get off my line I was welding on, so I stopped for a second to see where I was at. But yeah, I welded that one whole foot bead without popping the breaker. Who knows, I got six and a half inches. I know that weld pack, uh, 140 pops the breaker constantly at my work, and uh, it's really irritating. 
I got that quarter inch uh, bead notch here. I'm gonna run about an inch and a half of weld on this guy as well with the uh, titanium. So here's that Lincoln bead. Right to here is where it popped the breaker. And here's where we welded with the titanium. And then I switched over to here and this is where I welded that one foot long bead. And it did not pop the breaker. Got the Vulcan set up with the 030 wire in it. And uh, should have done this on all the weld tests, but didn't think about it until now. Um, doing a lap joint rather than a butt joint. Anyways, we're going to run down it. I think it's set up for eighth inch, but uh, this is 316ths. So I think it's going to be fine. One thing I want to point out, if you're a skilled welder, you probably already know this, but uh, about four years ago or three years ago, I welded a um, hydraulic tank on a log splitter. And I learned this trick the hard way. Uh, if you stop on a joint, especially something you got hydraulic fluid in, you, instead of just starting at that joint again, you want to actually start in front of it and then come back to it and then start welding. It uh, kind of probably guarantees that you're not gonna have a pinhole in your hydraulic tank that you gotta come back through and fill in later. I learned the mistake the hard way. Bring you guys in for a close up of that weld. So here's that weld I just did. And here's that stop point I had, started in front and then backed up. Get a little extra heat on that joint where you start and stop. But yeah, it welded really nice. There's the Lincoln, Titanium, and the Vulcan. All right, you guys, I got some flux wire in here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I welded with this crap way too long. It puts off a lot of smoke and a lot of splatter. I've even had one guy correct me on that. It's not splatter, it's spatter. Who gives a shit, really? Okay, anyways, we're gonna start welding on here. Uh, one good thing about um, flux that might be helpful for people with only 120 volts in their shop is with the flux in there, it seems to definitely have a deeper penetration. It welds a lot hotter. So this is 316's metal plate here. So one thing you gotta remember with flux cores is actually ground positive rather than solid wire. Solid wire, you know, ground is negative. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind if you run any of these machines on flux. Had somebody comment that they got a titanium and it welded awful, they took it back. And I asked them if they were actually running it on flux wire with uh, ground positive and they never commented back. So anyway, something to consider. 030. There we go. Bring you guys in and uh, we'll chip off some of the slag. You know, lays on pretty good when you get going with it. Uh, I don't know, it's just so damn smoky. But yeah, turned out pretty good still. That's the weld right there. Here's the Lincoln. Pop the breaker right here and did this with the titanium and as you know I could weld the whole foot of metal with the titanium without popping the breaker and here is that uh, lap joint with the uh, Vulcan laid on nicely 
And here is that flux that I laid on with the Vulcan. I can't say enough bad about that Lincoln. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm sorry if you own one. I'm really sorry. But I've used it enough at work, and if it doesn't blow the breaker like constantly, it will uh, go into a duty cycle a lot. And I tried to weld some uh, one of these old glue presses, try to repair one, and it took forever waiting for the duty cycle for it to cool down to start welding again. And it just pissed me off. So I'm definitely frustrated with that machine. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Like I said, I wanted to do more of a test in the beginning, and that Lincoln just shit it out. It wasn't working very good, just kept popping the breaker. So that was out of the question. So we just started welding with them to show you guys what these things can do. Oh uh, yeah, so 120 volts, it worked pretty good. Um, Sorry if you do have that Lincoln at home. I'm not trying to diss your personal welder. I just, uh, it's frustrating. I've had it for a while at my work and welded with it and it's frustrating. Not a personal diss if you own that machine. But anyways, between these two, I felt the Omni Pro was a little smoother tonight on 120 volts. It feel, felt like I had a little extra power to spare if you needed it. Um, that's my personal feeling. Is it worth $300 more than this thing? This thing also welded very well, but the Omni just felt a little smoother. Anyways, that was my feeling on that. Uh, all this plate steel that I was welding on tonight, I'm going to put a link up here to another video that people usually never seem to watch. It's uh, about where I salvage metal, good places to look for metal, and uh, get, get it for cheap or free, so check out that link. I'm going to put in the description down below where uh, all my other videos about these welders are going to be in the description, so you can click through and find, I think, four or five other videos on that. So go through there and click and check out some of these other ones if you're more interested in purchasing one of these welders and want to see how they do with other, uh, the other options on them. One last thing I want to note, uh, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe. And if you're packing these things around, they're uh, pretty portable. I find that this one kind of is a little bit more my personal favorite these days because I'm hauling it to work almost every week. And it just fits what I need a little more for hauling it around to work or up to the mill. And the Vulcan's great if you have a big shop and you want to keep it in there. It has a bit better duty cycle. Um, but the titanium fits my needs a little bit better being half the weight, more compact. But again, if you're packing these things around, I got some simple Velcro straps on here and you can just wrap up the leads really quick and pack them out. So until next time, guys, take care.